Today, I want to talk about the future of energy. And everyone's talking about the same thing. It's three times more energy dense than fossil fuels. And it's the most abundant element on the planet. I'm talking about hydrogen. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. If you've never seen me before, I've recently started investing and I'm trying to find some good stocks for the future. And right now, everyone's talking about the same thing. The world now plans to bring hydrogen back to your homes, your cars, and your aircraft. Just a quick reminder here guys, it took a lot of time and research to put this video together. So if you find it interesting, please could you give it a like and subscribe, it would really help me out. Hydrogen has been a pretty hot topic, particularly in the motor industry, ever since Jay Leno started drinking out of exhaust pipes. It's a buzzing sector with lots of startups with great concepts for the future. No, we're not talking about Nikola. I'm talking about real companies with real deals and real revenues. Hydrogen has the potential to revolutionize our energy sector. Um, hold on a second, I've just got to uh, dress up for this bit. got to put on the smart glasses. Um. Hydrogen has a huge energy release when burned. It's three times more energy dense than fossil fuels. When heat is applied, hydrogen bonds with oxygen in the air and releases energy. When you burn fossil fuel products like gas and oil, it releases CO2 and other nasties, which isn't great for the environment. However, when you burn hydrogen, the only output is water, which is great for the environment. But hydrogen does have two main obstacles. First of all, it's fucking explosive, as you've seen. The problem with hydrogen's flammability should be obvious. If you get a leak in a tanker or you have a car crash, you're gonna have a big problem. But the biggest problem is how we get the hydrogen back out of the water. There are a few possible ways of doing this. You can release it chemically, like I did, but it produces a lot of alkaline waste, which isn't a great thing or you can do it the preferred way, which is through electrolysis. Electrolysis is the way of moving the H2 away from the O in water by passing through it with electricity. It's actually quite a simple process, but the problem is kind of like going for a jog to lose weight. You know you can jog and jog more and eventually you will expend enough energy to lose weight, but it's really inefficient and you might as well just eat less. Ah, oh, I could do with a cheeseburger now. It's the same with hydrogen. It requires way more energy than our fossil fuels can provide. So scientists like me are trying to find ways of making it more efficient or trying to find more electricity. That's the sciencey bit over so I can take off the coat now. National Grid are shitting themselves right now because they foresee a huge increase in energy demand over the next 10 years. And this is mainly down to hydrogen electrolysis. It's making huge changes to make itself useful for the hydrogen takeover. They're preparing for some sort of switch like the analog to digital thing in 2007, so things go a bit smoother when we eventually start using hydrogen. Those very intelligent experts would like to add hydrogen to our gas supply. So eventually when our houses become safe enough, we'll be able to use hydrogen to fuel our homes. But as discussed earlier, Mass hydrogen production will drain our fossil fuel supply in a couple of years, so we need to start finding some renewable solutions. And this is why I don't think hydrogen is going to play the big part in motor vehicles, no matter how much Nikola says it will. If battery capability gets lighter and we're able to produce these ultra capacitors, then we might as well just cut out the hydrogen middleman and charge our cars directly from the grid instead of filling it with explosive gas because we're going to be making tons of excess electricity from all the renewables that we're going to be installing. Hydrogen is going to be way more than having a mobile water dispenser. I think Tesla is proving that. And that's where some of my favorite hydrogen stocks come in. If I really want to be looking at the future, I want to be looking at hydrogen production and hydrogen infrastructure. First, you can look at fuel cells. 
Fuel cells are a very important part of the hydrogen market. It focuses on the delivery of the power from the hydrogen. There are many, many startups in this field. So I've picked a couple just to get you started. The first one I like is Ceres. Ceres is a British offering and it wants to be part of the all round powering of your home and businesses. They have a patented technology they call steel cell. You can pop a few of these in instead of your boiler and it will heat and power your home. These guys say that when hydrogen is ready to be pumped into people's homes, these steel cells are ready to go already, which is quite a good advancement for the future. I'd say that Ceres's balance sheet is improving as well, coming off the back of a few orders last year. But at the moment, it isn't turning a profit. You've also got Plug Power. Plug has been making big business powering forklifts. Its free cash flow has been increasing nicely over the past few years. But it hasn't been able to generate any great orders for the fuel cells just yet. So it does look like it's gaining cash year on year, but it's mainly funded by shareholders. And another good mention from the UK sector would be Powerhouse Energy. Powerhouse Energy has its main business in burning waste, which is kind of how it's going to get to the hydrogen market. Hydrogen is likely to be produced in the short term by burning waste. And these guys are also looking at hydrogen fuel cells. Powerhouse has done extremely well at getting rid of its debt. And I love a company that lives within its means. However, this has meant that it's running out of free cash flow. And because it's not turning a profit, it's not creating any more cash, which is kind of dangerous for a business. It's probably going to need to refinance. And like Plug, the main way it's going to be doing that is by reissuing shares and diluting shareholder profits. But I will say it does look like a positive company for the future. The other hydrogen sector you should be looking at is hydrogen electrolysis. Fuel cells are great for short term and transport, but in my opinion, the real business is in production. And to me, the two best ones are Nell and ITM Power. Nell is the current market leader. It's been around since the 1920s. It's still not turning a profit with the electrolysis, but it has seen a recent influx of orders from places like South Korea and big companies like Hyundai and Nikola Motors. Nell, in my opinion, is the healthiest of all the hydrogen stocks and it could start to see positive earnings as early as 2023. ITM Power is the British offering for electrolysis. It's nowhere near as healthy as Nell and it also doesn't have the same earnings projection, but it will actually get there. However, ITM has a very strong product range and it's working on its scalability by adding new factories. Within hydrogen, all of these companies have a common theme no one's making a profit. It makes pretty much all of these companies completely speculative and very risky. These hydrogen startups need a huge injection of money to scale up production and make electrolysis cheaper. Scalability of hydrogen is a huge industry problem. It requires a lot more investment, but if the industry reaches its goal of around $70 billion, it reckons it could cut the cost of hydrogen production by half within just a few years. But I can't see me being able to invest in any of these companies. Don't get me wrong, I think they're great, but they're just too risky at the moment. As a dividend investor, my investment strategy is to find companies with a solid balance sheet. I can say with reasonable certainty that none of the companies that I'm invested in will go bankrupt anytime soon. It's a strategy that minimizes the risk to my hard earned money, but still gives me a little bit of return but I do still want to get involved. So I want to get into hydrogen indirectly so it minimizes my risk and I'm still able to profit on it when it becomes big in the future. Luckily, the big boys of energy have started sniffing out a bargain and they're trying to partner up with some of these hydrogen startups. BP and Shell have both stepped in to try and prove the hydrogen concept. BP has the Rotterdam project where it hopes to explore hydrogen with natural gas and one of my investments, Shell, has partnered up with ITM Power in Germany to produce one of the largest hydrogen electrolysis plants in the world. I could also look at Pembina Pipeline, which is a large dividend payer that's working with the Canadian government. I did look into Pembina, but it feels like one of those old ass companies that isn't really looking forward. Its balance sheet is a little inconsistent, but not bad by any means. 
and it's seen awesome growth over five years. It's also a company that is well placed to take advantage of the hydrogen market. But right now it's all bark and no bite. It keeps talking about its sustainability plans, but it has the option right now to make its hydrogen gas pipelines future proof. And it isn't doing it. Even though hydrogen has all this backing, it still faces a lot of obstacles. Reducing the cost of production is just the tip of the iceberg, when you consider that hydrogen tears through steel pipes much quicker than natural gas does. We will also require a huge amount of renewable energy to keep up with this production. Which brings me to my final point, and it might be controversial, but I don't see hydrogen as available for widespread use. I can't quite understand why we would create a huge new renewable energy source just to power the production of another. Seems inefficient. And this takes us to renewables, which I think are the real hydrogen stocks. Hydrogen projects are only really being given the electricity because Scandinavia and Australia are producing more of it than they need. And there's no reason to think this trend won't continue into the future, leaving hydrogen as more of an alternative fuel. Hydrogen isn't likely to be needed in cars, and it might not even be needed in homes. It's quite possible that hydrogen could become more of a niche product that's used in warehouses, or it makes sense in aircraft as well. So to me, the real hydrogen companies are the ones that are dedicating themselves to wind and solar. You have firms like Enphase and Vestas, which are companies that are actually in profit. But still, there isn't a single renewable stock that's solid enough for me to add to my strategy. I also would struggle to keep up with these companies in an industry that's changing all the time. Of course, I don't want to miss out on a massive sector that's probably going to be the future. That's why I'm in the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF, ticker symbol INRG. The INRG ETF is made up of the top 30 renewable energy firms in the world. It has a dividend distribution of 1.4% twice a year. It's been pretty flat for a few years, but it's starting to gain some traction. It is one of the more riskier ETFs out there. A reminder that the renewable sector is still a new sector. It has a fee of 0.65%, which is pretty high, but it could pay off in the long run. And because I'm not smart enough to keep up with all the new renewable energy stocks, and because one day when all these hydrogen companies get big enough, they'll be added to this ETF, I see it as my answer. And I'm spreading my risk across this entire sector with this cool little ETF. And it's had a bit of a drop today, so let's go ahead and put 100 in. So we look for 10, 20. We click review order and send by order. And there we have it, 20 new shares of iShares Global Clean Energy. That's where I am, but you might not be like me. So let's talk about strategy. What's the best way I would hypothetically go forward? If I had the balls and I was 100% sure that hydrogen was definitely the future, that there was no other sector as important, I would probably put all of my cash into all of the top hydrogen stocks. Because if the industry itself is going to be as life-changing as what Amazon was for us, then only one of these stocks needs to succeed, right? I would be investing all of my money in all of the companies like Fuel Cell, like ITM, like Ballard, like Powerhouse, like Plug, and buying lots of little lottery tickets, so one would pay off. But that's only if it's the real deal. On the other hand, we could be seeing the start of a brand new bubble. There are going to be lots of new startups in this sector over the next 10 years. Most of them will be useless. They won't have any revenue, they won't have any cash flow, but they'll still start to see a hike in stock price. All of the promises will be based on future designs and the potential of hydrogen production. And like in the 90s, we had lots of overvalued IT companies. All of these companies had a really high market price, but none of them had anything to back it up. And in 2000, we saw the dot-com bubble, and the only companies that survived were the ones that had a bit of clout behind them. Many investors lost a lot of money in the 2000 crash because they invested in companies with absolutely no earnings. I'm calling this pretty early. We are a long way from a renewable bubble. But as a long-term investor, you might want to think about your exit strategy 
and where some of these firms are going to take you. The best thing I can do when a company isn't really showing any profit yet or doesn't have any free cash is try and dig into the fundamentals of their ethos and make sure this company sees the world the same way you do. Because then if you trust in the company, you won't feel so bad when you lose all your money because you made the best decision you could. Thank you very much for watching everyone. If you have any hot tips on hydrogen stocks, let me know about them in the comments below. As ever, none of what I have said today should be considered financial advice. Please spunk your own money up stupid stocks by doing your own research. The investment platform I use is Trading212. If you wanted to get into investing, you can sign up through a link in the description below. If you sign up through that link, you get a free share and one of my subscribers gets a free share. Thanks again for watching guys. <laughs> Thanks again for watching guys. And if you found this video entertaining or useful, please feel free to like, subscribe and invest. Ow, 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 ow. Hot, hot, hot. Don't try this at home, kids. Hydrogen. But plug has. <laughs> but plug. <laughs> but plug. <laughs> but plug. But plug. No, Nicola. No. Bad Nicola. No. No, Nicola. No. Bad. Bad Nicola. <laughs> Straight face. Might um, keep the glasses around for uh, some special time with Mrs. Briscoe. <laughs> it takes a long time to put on a on a white coat. Gotta have the glasses. Um, fun fact: I think I, I nicked these off a hipster on a night out. Um, absolutely no ocular benefit. Completely perspex. Why do people do it? Except to, except to obviously uh, dress up in videos for no reason. <laughs>